Okay, what are we doing right now? We are cutting it. Range hood. A range hood. Yeah. Huh? We're gonna do a how-to video yeah. of how to install a range hood over an island. He's Don't bite that. <laughs> Don't bite that. That's yucky. That's yucky. So I think this is Zoom is how you would say this brand. I just looked up on Amazon for the best reviews, best bang for the buck, everything like that. And it looked looked like this one. I also was trying to choose one that didn't have big seams. And this one looks good. Looked good in all the pictures and everything. Look at this. I don't think this came with the box. You guys poke <laughs> that through one of the cracks? We must have That's one of your guys' toys, huh? creates the structure that holds all this guy strong. So first step, mounting this guy up there. I need to figure out exactly where my dead center is and then hold this up there for dead center. So now, and this, this kit seems really nice, this brand. It came with, um, let me bring you over here. It came with my little paper template it even came with tape, some duct tape, and all the parts and pieces I need, zip ties and everything. square just like this and hold it perfectly level. Right there. Yeah. Thanks doll. Yeah. Okay so I just got this square to my range. So to get this square to the range what I had to do I tried measuring from the wall but walls aren't perfectly square like ever. And so I didn't 100% trust that. What I ended up doing was getting my level and putting my, one of my legs as an extension up there, getting it perfectly level with the help of Sarah, making a line, same thing on this side, made a line, and then I squared it to my two lines there. Um, and of course I had found my, my center point as well. So now that I've got that perfectly squared on there, I, my battery died, but I just cut out my circle I need for my vent. I did that with the razor blade scoring it and now I'm gonna come back now that I've made a mark in the dry, drywall with my drywall saw, just my hand drywall saw. studs here 
So I'm going to need to do a little bit of framing now. So now I'm going up into the attic to measure from stud to stud. Okay, kids are in bed. I just got out of the attic. I put in some bracing. Now I am ready to attach this guy, my main bracket. Got that mounted up there all secured. Next is going to be adding legs onto these. So now I need to figure out my height. And I've read that you want 26 to 30 inches of height here. Okay, now that I've figured out my height here, now I'm gonna slide on my my chimney, my finished chimney. Um, the other thing I need to do is drop down a vent and that way I can connect all this while my cover is on here and bring it all up and mount it. So I'm going to hop back into the attic, send down that <laughs> air fitting. Are you laughing at me? Did you say attic? I don't think so. Uh, better redo it though. So I'm going to jump back in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> I just teasing. So I'm going to jump back in the attic. Now I got that pipe in. As I was placing my small chimney up, and then I have my large chimney that's supposed to go around that one, and that's what gives me my height. As I was doing that, I realized that based on the length of these chimneys, I the highest I can possibly be with both chimneys is like 20, I think it was 26 inches. And that, just to give you perspective, would be about here, right in my face. We could do that without too much problem, but it's just too low. We're just deciding we don't like it to be that low. And you have a seam, which I hate the seam look. Our goal was to put this rain shed as high as possible to keep the view open. So here's our next thought. If I just use one chimney, that puts, when I put this up here, that'll put it at 30 inches is right there so it's out of my eye line as I'm standing here and 30 inches is from everything I researched 30 inches was still good for the cooktop what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is hold that guy hold my range up and put some screws just in the in the face of this then I have no seam and I have my height the negative is you're going to see some screw heads, you're going to see four per side, and I'm trying to decide if that's going to be a big negative, and if it is a negative, is it more of a negative than a seam? Anyway, I, I'm deciding, I've got this all marked out, I made some templates of the whole pattern that's on this, and I marked it all on here, I'm going to drill some holes. <laughs> Now, having said all that, if I, if, we do a, if I do all this and we decide that it looks bad, I could cut my six inches or whatever I need off of this and six inches off my other shroud and put both shrouds up and it covers everything that I'm doing right now. So, it, other than wasting time, I'm really not risking anything by plugging some holes in here. And I, I think it'll look better by not having a seam. Anyway, leave a... Leave your opinion in the comments below if you think this is a good idea or a bad idea. We're gonna, I'm gonna try it out right now.
and the finished product here.